Uh, welcome everyone to the practice of diary comics. Uh, my name is Derek Royal. I'm the producer. Oh. In Sorry. And, 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 we, and it also comes with a soundtrack, by the way, that you can buy outside. Dustin is selling them um, at his table as well. Uh, yeah, my name is Derek Royal. I'm the producer and co-host of the podcast, The Comics Alternative. And I've talked with almost everyone here on the panel uh, for the podcast. Well, actually, everyone. Uh, every single one of them, in one form or another, have been on the podcast. And the people who are here, if you don't already know... Um, Glennis Fox, Kevin Butnick, Summer Pierre, and Dustin Harbin. And what I will do, all people who know the craft, the ins and the outs, the joys, and potentially the miseries of doing diary comics. And so what I'm going to do to start off is have each of the participants of the panel introduce themselves and highlight the works that they would like for you to check out. So, oh, oh I, was waiting, I was waiting for the slide to change. Show, well, introduce yourself okay. first, and then we'll go to the... I am Glynis Fox. <laughs> and then? Are we going along? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And she, she is the author, among other things, of Greek Diary. Eh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I didn't bring my book. I didn't either. I didn't either. They didn't write books, actually. We're too busy <laughs> writing them right now. Yeah. You're in my next diary comic, Glynis. Oh. <laughs> Are we going? Okay. Uh, I'm Kevin Budnick. Um, I, I write a, a daily comic um, called It's Okay to Be Sad, and uh, written a couple, or collected a couple of those uh, in different sort of yearly collections. They have different names, but the main thing is the daily. My name is Summer Pierre, and I have an autobiographical series which includes a lot of diary comics. It's called Paper Pencil Life. My name is also Summer Pierre. <laughs> my, na uh, my name is Dustin Harbin, and I make a comic called Diary Comics. It's a uh, dynamic uh, title that I chose years ago, and it's about me. Okay. Uh, and, and then what we're going to do next is each of the panelists is going to introduce you to some of the work that they do within the genre, if we want to call that, or mode of diary comics writing and illustrating. And then we're going to discuss some intriguing questions about the art and even the theory of diary comics and how that both is a form of life writing but a very distinctive kind of real life narrative from what most people think of in terms of graphic novel and autobiography, memoir, and straight out autobiography. Uh, so, Glennis? Keep going. <laughs> uh, this is the latest book that I just did and I've sold out, sadly, so upstairs. It's uh, about 40 pages from a diary of working on an excavation in Greece, which is what this Greek diary comic is about. What's the next slide, just in case? Yes, there it is, right there. It was about um, working on the dig and a visit from my family and children, so traveling with children after that who hated it. So uh, it, was, it was about the conflict of the love of the place and uh, the daily difficulties of being with children. Uh, this is a... It's a well, this book, that this brings up the um, part of this book. I, I drew about 100 of pages in Greece and then had it at SPX not uh, two years ago. Um, Summer read it, and she said, this is, this is a good start. You need some context for this. <laughs> and so uh, I drew another 100 or so pages that um, helped... So it's, it's diary comic and fake diary comic, where I pretended I was there. <laughs> uh, what else have we got? This is a page from the first, the other book, but it's very similar to the pages in this. I've just drawn them with a pen in a sketchbook with a, a sheet of paper with a, like panels drawn on them so that I would try and stay in the panel without drawing panel borders around them. Uh, yeah, there's another scene from... I'm sure you can't read it from here. Is that right? Yeah. Too bad. I can. <laughs> Keep kind going. Kind of. 
Uh, all three. All three of these were about scary dogs in Greece. <laughs> Keep going. That was that was a sketchbook page that uh, sitting on a, a lawn uh, beach chair, looking straight up at the Greek flag and the swallows and my feet. And that's one um, of my favorite haiku: <laughs> Greek flag. The swallows in my feet. <laughs> does that does that work out? Dustin? Stop, Glennis. Don't argue with me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you know about haiku, Dustin. <laughs> Pretty down. I know Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was in Greek. Uh, another a sketchbook page that I just I. This is the, the kids pretending to have a fight with an imaginary character named Al. And they were screaming, oh, you die, Al. We're, we're surrounded by um, people on the beach. Uh, it's, um, yeah. Is there more? Helen eating linguine on the beach. <laughs> Another haiku, by the way. Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful haiku. Uh, that one's, this one's about not having sex while traveling with children. <laughs> Mama and Daddy are doing sex. We certainly are not, and don't I know it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Kevin. That's me now. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, I, I've been doing diary comics for almost nine years now. Um, and it's sort of your traditional four panel a day structure. Uh, and I make them real, real small in a sketchbook. And that's just, that's like an example of an average one. Um, I, it look, I, but it looks really big. It's very big How right big now. How big is it? Uh, it? They're only about two inches by two inches. Uh, what? Yeah, those ones are. So, so uh, I like kind of, yeah. But wow. one so, panel, not all the panels. No, the, the 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 that four panel drawing Whoa. is only about two inches by two. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Um, that that one's probably four by four. So I like kind of go in and out of different styles. Um, right now I'm working in watercolor and uh, pen and penciling, but sometimes I don't pencil. Sometimes I just like to work with just pen in a sketchbook. Um, I can go to the next one. Oh, uh, so I do a lot of my comics about um, uh, body dysmorphia and mental health, and um, I th those are both things that I have, and I am like a huge advocate for therapy, and uh, I write a lot about going to therapy and my experiences. Uh, so yeah, no, it's just like a lot of that's that, that's my content. You can go to the next one. Um, that is me laying on the ground in front of my therapist's office. Oh yeah, so the last <laughs> line at the bottom there, it says maybe I need to be sick in order to make comics is a thing that um, when you make a lot of your work about uh, mental illness, you um, sort of start to conflate the reasons why you make your work. And it's a thing that I struggle with a lot, whether or not like I feel like I have something to write about if I'm not writing about like a personal problem, or if um, mm -hmm. my work is interesting enough, if it's not, I'm, what am I doing here? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, you can go to the next one. Yeah, just a con. Just, that's, I don't have anything to say about that one. You can go to the next one. Nope. Summer's turn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so uh, I started making comics uh, by doing the diary comic, and that would just literally include something I could finish in one page, one day. So it was a sort of a daily practice. And uh, this one is um, a little bit further, like a couple years in. I've been only been doing comics for about five years. Um, and often what will happen is I won't have anything interesting. I was in my studio all day long. What do I do? Um, but sometimes I'll just talk about just things I did. And uh, often it involves an object and some memory or an interesting spin will happen on it. And this one was an old photograph I found in my family's albums and that I didn't recognize. And I imagined um, what had transpired during that photo. So. Next. 
Um, here's another example also of just, I was really struggling with some, just what happened during the day, and it was just boring things, except for I was listening to the musician Howling Wolf, and uh, his music was so overpowering to me during the day, and so, uh, as you can see, he's the center of my day while I do mundane little things as I go throughout. Next. And another, it's just, I, I like to experiment a lot. I use comics as a form of, of experimenting. Um, I think one of my favorite things is, I'll try this. I'll see what's, I like to shake things up. So while it can be a, the basic meditation stays the same, what are the things I'm doing during the day or thinking about, um, I sometimes shake up the format. And this was uh, one of those 24-hour comics. And I just did it from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to bed. Next. And this is sort of something I've, I've um, sort of emerging into more recently, uh, sort of going into magical realism. I do a lot of walking in the morning and um, sometimes, and I'll report, like this is another experiment that I did where I was like, what if I was speaking to you, like through the walk? Um, and so I did this narrative and then at the end you can see there's this little twist that happens, a thought kind of comes alive. And I feel like in this comic, uh, the diary comics sort of started talking back to me. Next. And I hope this is the last one. Um, <laughs> this last, and so what's interesting to me is when you start doing a, a practice of something like diary comics, I mean, I feel like diary comics have, have really taught me how to do comics. And I've started thinking of it as a jumping off point to memoir, but using the format of like, this is what I was doing today, and then a memory emerges from that. And uh, this is an example of that. And I think that's it. And by the way, one of the few references in comics to the TV show Hazel. So, oh, yeah. So Which actually proud. originally was a comic. Uh, hey. A Ted Key. It all yeah. comes back. That's right. That's it. Yeah. I'm Dustin Harvin. Um, I started making diary comics in 2010, like New Year's Day, I think, and um, and did them every day and for about a year, and got very good at, or not very good. I, they started really shitty, <laughs> and then got better by the end of the year in a way that was exciting. You know, in the same way that you do anything, if you play guitar every day for a year, you're going to be somewhat good at guitar and it's it's startling same as touch typing suddenly you have the talent of being able to not look at a keyboard and type an essay that's that's crazy that's like a brain power thing so anytime you draw for a lot you'll get better at drawing but after that I've gotten really bearish about um, diary comics after that because I was just kind of jerking off every day like oh, today I made a sandwich and I tried <laughs> sriracha on it instead of mustard and uh, that's a comic um, <laughs> and then as you get better at drawing it takes longer and so now you've spent three hours making a comic about sriracha um, and so like summer I think lately I've been trying to I don't do them daily anymore I only do them when I have something I want to talk about um, and I also suffer from Kevin's problem of being like, what if a lot of my comics have to do with depression? Not all of them, but a fair number of them, and especially in 2010. And so it becomes somewhat poisonous to be like, I can only create if I'm talking about some kind of misery um, and sriracha. If those are your two, <laughs> those are, yeah, your two um, ends of the spectrum, it's, it's a shitty spectrum. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing more... Um, Sorry, there's something mysterious under there. More of like, this one's like a, I did a long comic, more like a memoir about a, uh, a memory of my, um, there's some trees behind my house. And, and I had a whole long story. I did a storytelling thing where I did this thing and, and I turned it into a comic. And it's just a memory of my mother describing uh, the, the, where the cows come home. You know this expression, I'll do that to the cows come home. They play music to make um, cows come back uh, at the end of the day. The, it's like, and they get fed and stuff, so they're used to it, which to me seemed magical. The cows don't just come home, they need to be summoned. They don't know to return to the, 
um, place. And I made this long comic about it. And then, what's the next slide? I'm not, I can't even remember. Uh, go one more. That was more recent. So, like, this is a comic. Um, I don't want to just describe every one of these comics, but this is a comic that no one really liked. Um, <laughs> but I really liked it. And it was about, this is the kind of comics I want to make now um, that aren't about telling you a moment Remember that sandwich I made and that sriracha I put on it, how exciting that moment was of discovery of sriracha? Uh, or remember how depressed I was that day? Is I want to make you depressed or I want to make you feel like you have sriracha in your mouth. And so it's, it's an abstraction. And it's, a, it's the same way that fiction works, good fiction. Like Michael DeForge, I think, is someone that doesn't do a lot of autobiography, but I feel like there's a lot of him in his work, and he's, instead of taking those ideas and saying, today something happened to me, he's taking those ideas and spinning them into something. And he's, he's obviously a, a weird example because he's so good. Um, but if I, I, I struggle with diary comics because it feels like it's the closest story to hand. Um, and so it's fun to try and like, this one was a, a guy one time in high school, he says to me, we're smoking outside of a we worked at a subway, went out there smoking, looking cool, smoking. He says, do you ever think about how many parking spaces there are in the world? <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> if, I mean, it's a fun thought, how many pieces of bread you've ever eaten in your life, something like that. So I made a whole comic about who invented the parking space. What does a parking space want? Does it have a motive? It's spreading. Is it spreading on purpose? Is it viral? Is it sentient? This one here, like the, the idea of them uh, forming societies, uh, spreading around, morphing into new shapes. The end of the comic is, uh, is um, um, a weird idea, and that was the point of the comic, of what if there is a parking space that has never had a car parked in it? And there's a picture of a, a parking lot that zooms in on this one space with no, no oil slick. Everything's still black. The lines are still sharp. It's never been used. <laughs> what is that, how does that parking space feel? That lonely, unloved, unused parking space. Mm -hmm. End of the comic. No one gave a shit about it. Not a, <laughs> not a single person was like, oh my god, I've got to retweet this. No one was like, uh, but to me that was work that was exciting to me. This one was one, so this is more on the Kevin tip. Like last year at this time, I just turned 44, and last year, my birthday was Monday, um, I literally felt like I was dying. Um, not, I wasn't suicidal, but it was like I felt like I had fucked my life up so much <laughs> um, through my own machinations. And like a, like a person that self-diagnosed and said, I'm dying of this, now that I know I'm dying, I'll do nothing about it, but I'll complain <laughs> endlessly about it. <laughs> so I made this long comic, and it starts with me cutting my own head off, which um, to me communicated that feeling right away of like danger and shock. Uh, and then the comic went on, I, in each drawing I was drawing myself dying over and over again. I get hit by a bus. I drowned in a, the shallow end of a pool. I'm electrocuted by hanging um, wires. Point being, I'm putting myself in these situations where this misery happens. Idiot. Uh, I got so many emails that were like, hey, we love you. Are you okay? <laughs> and I, it wasn't that I, I wasn't going to do anything, but it was like a dark place to be in. And but I was, I'm proud of this comic because I feel like it communicated that dark place. Rather than saying, I'm in a dark place, it said, do you feel how this dark place feels? Um, this confusing, um, I, I'm just in a, in a closet that goes on for miles in every direction, and I'm lost. Mm -hmm. Like that, that evocative feeling is, is a thing that I think autobiography is really good because we all have those feelings or, you know, we all struggle with with our various struggles, which to us, um, as the pilot of our stories, feel like they are everything. Um, and it's, which is a hard... So this is the kind of comic I make now. This is, this is a comic from last year. There was just some things I saw that day um, um, in a way that, kind of in a haiku way, to, um, in a way that just feels... Um, 
diffuse. There's not really a narrative. There's just a feeling that I would like to get across. There is a thing in the country. I grew up in the country, and there's no light out there. So on a dark night, it's pitch black. When I used to sneak out to go smoke cigarettes in the end of the driveway, it would be so pitch black that you're like, someone could sneak up behind me, murder me, and eat my body, and no one would ever know. Like, no one would see it, someone could walk by, and I could be there just bleeding out of the throat. Sorry for that image, but. <laughs> but then when the moon comes out, there are all these shapes appear, like the, these abstract shapes, like the, the absolute white roof of a house, even though everything around it is pitch black. I don't know if that's that interesting a story to tell, but there, um, comics is really incremental. And if you have a bunch of diary comics, if I read a bunch of Kevin's comics in a row, um, this one might be really affecting. This one um, might be just some things happening. But the ones that are just some things happening, if they were all really intense and affecting, it'd be exhausting. Mm -hmm. But the idea of Kevin's life in these little bits mm -hmm is really compelling, and then when there's a high, you feel the high, when there's a low, you feel the low. So it's comics like that that are just like nothing, or a nice breather between your sriracha. <laughs> 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 and then this is just the cover of my last uh, diary comic collection, which uh, if you go back a few, Derek, to that one that I said to skip, I'm sorry I'm talking so long, but everyone else talked not enough, so I feel like I'm gonna pick up the slack. <laughs> I had this, I went out to um, California where I was born and to see the, um, we moved when I was a kid and I was working hard to see the redwood forests um, and then I had these different struggles and I basically got out there like 30 minutes before dark and I ended up just, I fell down weeping in the middle of this forest, it starts raining, weeping. And not weeping like out of sadness, like out of cathartic, kind of like there are all these different things that just like bubbled out. So I'm like on the ground, and I'm like, what is happening? Like, <laughs> like this kind of like coughing, strange weeping, but it was, it was beautiful. It was a really wonderful experience. So I made this like 40-page comic about it that's in that last diary comic that the cover was there. But what's funny is just to tell that story about I, I had this weird weeping thing. I had to draw four billion cross-hatched redwood trees to do it, mm -hmm. which is a high cost to pay for a, a low <coughs> a low percentage ending. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah but so it, it's a problem with diary comics. In order to get there, to tell these tiny stories, there's so much work involved. And now I'm like drawing this to death. I don't draw much bigger than Kevin, but my originals are five by seven, so. But still I figured out a way to belabor that image. <laughs> to death in that tiny space. Mm. It's kind of manic. Yeah. Now, I mean, we've been introduced to, to each of the panelists' work, and this is just scratching the surface. Uh, if you don't know each of their work already, please do check out <coughs> what they do and get a fuller sense. But what I want to do now is to go from the introduction to the diary comics of each panelist to begin talking critically about what diary comics actually are. And, and what I want to throw out to you guys is this question, in what ways are diary comics distinctive from other kinds of life writing within the comics medium, like memoir or autobiography? Now, I, you know, I, I have some ideas of my own in terms of the differences between autobiography and memoir. And, and, then, and then diary comics, I mean, one of which is something that I think everyone alluded to in, in most uh, recently, Dustin, is he underscored the immediacy of the project, right? And it, it strikes me that diary comics are distinctively different and notably different from memoir and autobiography in the medium in that there is more of a need to write on a regular basis something that has just recently or immediately happened, right? So there's much more of an immediacy and a timeliness there. Um, along with that, it strikes me that with diary comics, 
it lends itself to more contemporary technology. Now, what I mean by that is that when you're doing a diary comic, you know, it can be something that you do, as, as Kevin has mentioned, on a daily basis, right? So you make it a point to put up somewhere on some platform a diary comic. Now, one could choose to write a diary comic and keep things hidden until, let's say, a book length project is done. But I think what a lot of creators do who are engaged in the art and the practice, the title of the panel, of diary comics, is that they put what they have online or they make available via social media, which if, if your intentions are to write a memoir or autobiography, that's something that is done over the long haul. So you may or may not make that available to a potential audience via social media. So, and, and there are other differences as well, but I want to throw this question to you guys because I have my own views as a comic scholar, but those can be kind of boring and convoluted. As creators, how do you distinguish diary comics from other forms of writing that either you do or others do? In other words, what distinguishes diary comics from everything else? Um, I don't know. I uh, I don't distinguish it from other forms of comics other than they're inherently nonfiction, like or they're, that they are. F yeah, they're nonfiction. Um, let's get those two confused. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I think that, like, what, Dustin, like, what you were saying about the stuff that Michael does, like, there are uh, uh, so many talented fiction cartoonists who put a lot of themselves and their daily life and their experiences into the work that they generate, and... Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't I, know that I distinguish. I definitely distinguish them, because I think... Diary comics, uh, for me, they're built of, you know, Dustin's sandwich with whatever he's mm. got on it. I mean, Sriracha. I, Sriracha. I, okay. I said it like 50 times. <laughs> Let me write that down. I think uh, we have a subtitle that? for the panel. Yes. Um, uh, what I mean is uh, built of small moments that happen in, in the day that I think by writing about something small that happened, uh, you choose the thing to write about that something small that happened that um, some kind of sauce I'm not sure what it is I can't rem I can't remember what it's called but um, you, you have you had sriracha I don't know what you're talking about I'm, well um, so I I think of it as an accumulation of small moments that build to something larger as you're mm. writing over time, whether it's significant or not. Like Dustin said about the the highs and lows. Something sometimes some days um, you run out of something to mm. put on that you know whatever. Um, but I think if you're writing memoir, then you're very clearly you have uh, uh, some. Uh, like retros retrospect to see over time what happened and what emerges as important and what points that that you want to show in a comic. So I think they're for me they're very different. Mm. Or also um, taking something that uh, in one form I've taken stories that I've written that are that from a diary comic and creating a more um, like crafted or curated longer comic out of them. Um, some moment that happened that I thought was funny or frustrating that I wanted to distill into, both distill and expand into a longer comic. So, and also in diary comics, I want to keep things almost exactly as they happened or as I remember them. And in memoir, you can sort of tweak things to, to fit, especially if I'm trying to be funny or... <laughs> or say something specific like mm. or evoke an emotion that I didn't know was happening in the moment of the diary comic although you do you you see that in a much shorter time frame mm. <coughs> yeah the yeah I think I'm I agree and do the same thing but maybe I'm moving from diary the verb mm -hmm. I do it every day mm -hmm. um, this is a almost a reportage on my life mm -hmm. and to diary as memoir like if I were to say 
this happens a lot with like my personal life. Like I don't talk about sex at all in my comics. It's just like, Me neither. Oh. I would never. You talk about not having sex. That's right. That's right. But like if I if if I were to make a, to me it feels incredibly va invasive to if I were to make a comic and mention like something happening physically with someone and thus involving their privacy. Right. And blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. I mean I I have gotten in trouble with friends for including them in ways that they felt didn't make them or my family. I'm in trouble with my kids. Yeah. I'm not allowed to do it anymore. My diary comic days are over. I'm leaving. <laughs> Bye. Well, you, could just, you could pretend that you don't have children anymore. Yeah, that's right. It, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, right. Good luck. <laughs> but they the, might notice. If I, was, I try. Believe me. I try. I'm here now. <laughs> I'm trying. Um, if I, I leave a lot of stuff out or change facts to get to the same result but without mentioning those things mm, yes. or without muddying it with with details that don't really matter right. to the reader mm -hmm. that aren't necessary even if events change order um, because what I want is to communicate I guess there's a difference between the, I want to communicate but also like in the diary sense as a record and, and I also use them if I'm in a bad spot as a sort of therapy, only mm -hmm. in terms of mm -hmm. if I can figure out how to communicate to you mm -hmm. a thing, then I have to figure it out on some level. Yeah. In order to figure out how to talk about it, in order to figure out how to abstract it, mm -hmm. how to, what it. to leave out. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that's really a misunderstood part of diary comics is that it's not just a diary entry. It's not just like right. all feelings. There has to be some craft involved. And that was something I learned early on with the diary comic. You know, I once was do I had a hard day and I just was trying to do this narrative that was just bitching and and I was like, this is just a, a black vacuum. It's just, you know, it was like a diary entry of complaining, I'm, you know, uncomfortable and blah blah blah. And when it comes to comics, you have to actually have action. You have to have things happen. And so it was a real interesting practice for me, a very big feeler, to talk about actually what I did in my life, not just what I felt all the time. And I think what's interesting, um, you know, especially the example that Dustin showed where he was feeling pretty bleak um, on his birthday, and actually Kevin is a great record of, because you have a lot of emotions in your work, but it doesn't stay there. I mean, I think that's what's interesting is that you, we still see you mm. as a moving figure. And uh, comics really require that, that discipline of moving a figure in the world. And we still, I mean, that, and I think diary comics are an interesting balance between the personal and the active. See, that's what I think in terms of distinguishing between, mm. like, a, a diary comic and, and creating like a, a fiction comic or any other type of comic um, like it still requires a sense of craft and you still have to turn mm. the narrative and you have to like yeah. take the parts of you and the parts of your life that you think are going to be interesting to the reader and and like find a way to make the pieces fit which is essentially essentially the same thing as crafting a, a fiction narrative yeah. like so, because you can't just like grocery list your day for people because that's not compelling in any way. Actually, I made a comic that was just a grocery list. <laughs> <laughs> Buy sriracha, yeah. bread. You know what sriracha is in my household. Yeah. I just want you to know. <laughs> and, and I think that that's an important distinction to make. And not only with diary comics, but any kind of life writing, if you want to call mm -hmm. that kind of mode of creation in the broader sense. Uh, is that, you know, even with the truest to life narrative, there's still going to be some form of fictionalizing, uh, either in what you take out or what you choose to put in or maybe even narratively bend in some ways. Uh, and, and I, but I think, nonetheless, with diary comics, it just strikes me, and may, maybe you guys can disagree, uh, as Dustin takes out his uh, dinner, I guess, uh, is <laughs> sir, yes, I probably that's so. Donut. No, that's a donut. So <laughs> yeah. It's amazing how they make sriracha donuts yeah. now. Yeah. Dear diary, this donut is delicious. <laughs> yeah. Dear diary, Dustin didn't bring enough for everybody. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If if you if you're gonna eat, you gotta share. Actually, I have a muffin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want a brand muffin? Is anyone irregular? Yeah. <laughs> 
but it, but it strikes me that with, with diary comics, the thing that's different is, again, I, I come back to the immediacy, and I think that there may be either intentionally or otherwise, maybe under the radar, a need to represent things as they actually are, which, which leads me to something that, that you guys were bringing up earlier, and that is the responsibility of the comics diarist when it comes to not necessarily representing your own life, but the life of those around you, which I think can be a thorny issue. Um, over the past week, I've had the pleasure of interviewing for our podcast, not only Summer Pierre, but also someone who's in the audience, uh, Kyla Roberts, who <laughs> both have new books out, both of those, well, at least one of those books I think could be described as diary comics. I'm not sure about Summers, and I, I want to address that with you. Um, but I think I talked to both with them, both of them about representing family members and even friends, uh, but especially their children mm -hmm. in their comics. And that's something that it, it strikes me, and again, correct me if you think I'm off base here, that with memoir or more straight out autobiography, where you do have, I think, more liberty to play around mm -hmm. with the actual events. With diary comics, again, the emphasis on immediacy and putting out information about what you did or what you had on a particular sandwich um, one Sriracha. day. Sriracha. Yes. Is... You 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 got to be true, but at the same time, to what happened. But at the same time, you don't want to embarrass or even compromise either now or maybe in the future when they get older. Your children uh, come back and have that haunt you uh, and mar them for life, so to speak. So uh, speak to some of the responsibilities of a diarist comics creator that may not be there with those who, let's say, write memoir or even fictional narrative. Well, I, I'll speak to this because I. I just did a memoir, and it was very—it was a huge departure from doing uh, diaries. But you know, I do a lot of diaries about my daily life, which include a husband and a son. And I started out doing diaries about my days with my small son. Um, but then I had an experience, which I'll be purposely vague about, I'm sorry, that I started to write it down, and I realized it wasn't mine. It was my son's story. And I, it was a real, very, very good moment for me to experience because as someone who's been an autobiographical artist my whole life, and part of that is through processing of just like childhood experiences, all of these things, I realized that um, as fascinating as I found my son, as frustrating, as interesting, all of those things, um, I didn't have a right to him. I did not have a right to his narrative. Um, yeah, I ha he has a right to me, but I don't have a right to him. Um, and so I've been very, over the last few years, he appears in my comics, but he's not the focus of my comics. Um, and so that's been really important. That being said, when I wrote a memoir, um, I asked permission for people to show up. I also changed the appearance of certain people and changed their names. Um, but it's a different responsibility. Uh, you have to take responsibility for what you think of people, how they become characters in your narrative. Um, whereas diary, uh, it is, I mean, I, I know all of us have experienced this. I know you have definitely, and I know you, you know, you've had in your diary comics, you had a long-term relationship that showed up and that was a conflict, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like, where does the line, like you are a part of my life, but I don't want to tell your story, mm -hmm. you know? But that, but, <clears throat> yeah. Too much donut? You no, good? no, no, I'm, think, I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. There's never too much donut, Kevin. <laughs> the, the, that person um, uh, who, at the time, my girlfriend Kate, was also part of this community. She was not a cartoonist, but she would come to SPX a lot. Mm -hmm. She's friends with a lot of my friends. They're still part, you know, they're still in contact and everything. So, and she was very supportive of that, but when we'd have problems and they would, they would not pop up in the comic. We wouldn't, I wouldn't talk about problems between us, but when I was talking about dire stuff and she would appear as a per person of pretty central importance in my life, she would feel exposed in a way that, and we would talk about it, like she would be resentful. Um, I don't mean that in a bad way. She's had every right to be resentful but there was not a way to talk about that and have those comics have any teeth. Mm. It would be weird to leave her yeah. out. It was weird to leave her in. Mm. 
Um, and so I chose to pay the cost of leaving her in. Mm. Not that that was a ruinous cost. It wasn't like why we broke up or anything. It was mm. perfectly normal reasons that people break up. But, um, and I think I would still do that again today because if at some point you have to talk about something. <laughs> I leave sex out of my public life, but... But I can't leave everything out. I leave that out just because it's gross, too. No one's really I talk about sex. Well, I was crushing it last night. <laughs> um, but um, the, the things that are... I, I, I was looking at my originals, putting them in my a portfolio yesterday, and there's a comic about... I have a, a group of friends I've had for a million years who are very close, but I felt very estranged from them and I put that in the comic and I was and they were there and they know who they are they don't really read my comics so none of my friends are cartoonists none of my in Charlotte friends but I remember reading them and being kind of embarrassed for them that I was just like I don't feel like I have anything to say to these people I don't feel connected we've grown apart they're married you know different th ways mm -hmm. it's perfectly normal but it was like I wonder if they were hurt by that I wonder if they were offended whatever but I, I would still do it because that's important to be um it's important to externalize for people in our world. It's easiest to externalize through autobiography, but the externalization means you pull it out and you say, oh, and now you have to look at it from all its different angles and figure out how to draw it, how does it look from this angle and everything, and it's, um, it's the only reason I would have really thought of that out loud. I would have just lazily gone along and been like, I wonder why things are weird with my friends now. Yeah. <laughs> and now, I, because of that, I take steps. I involve myself in their life more. Still not enough, but I'm like, hey, do you need a babysitter? Hey, I should know your kids. Hey, we should um, whatever. And this is too many details, but uh, I think it's, I think it's, there's, it's, it's appropriate to be mindful of the cost, but I think you have to pay the cost sometimes. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You know, I can't help but, as, as you're talking now, Dustin, think of that. I'm a big Woody Allen fan, and as my past students will tell you, it, I always seem to see the world through the lens, so to speak, of Woody Allen. Mm. But the film Deconstructing Harry, which I think is a vastly underrated film, uh, if you've seen it at the very beginning, um, one of Harry's, who's a novelist, based, I believe, largely on Philip Roth. But here, one of Harry's ex-wives bursts into his apartment with a gun and plans on killing him because even though he's a writer of fiction, he has written about her and his relationship with her in a not-so-veiled manner. And so his life is at risk. Now, I wanted to ask the rest of you, Dustin was talking about some of the costs in the past experience that he has had in representing <coughs> others in his comics. But I'm curious about the rest of you. I mean, not that you've had anyone come in with a gun like we saw in Deconstructing Harry. Yet. But have you, ha yet, um, but have you had experiences in doing diary comics where you have had conflict, con uh, confrontation of some sort, something that has resulted in a very uncomfortable feeling with others confronting you? Say, hey, what are you doing? I, I got an email recently from my daughter in all caps saying, stop the humiliation. So, <laughs> How old is your daughter? 12. Oh. Uh, 11 then, so. The most humiliating yes. age. Yes, yeah. so I have stopped. I'm, I'm not writing about her anymore because mm -hmm. uh, thinking of Summer, what you said, you are not writing about your son much earlier than I've, I, I mean... It took that, I think, to to, and also the I would post something on on Facebook, and um, kids at my kids' school would have seen it through their parents' Facebook, and my kids would not have seen mm. it because I kind of rely on their inherent lack of interest in what I'm doing. You know, like I'm I'm I I'm, I'm I know I'm boring. So, uh, but when they hear it heard about it from other kids that changed um uh hmm. also but but um before that i think it was i didn't i felt like this was was our story together the, the i mean i didn't want it to be just cute things they say <laughs> but but it was things that were 
poignant or funny or maddening, so it was all right. But yeah, and I'll, I'll just add this: it's like I still record my son Gus's life, but privately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you know, you in comic form, or um, I do. I do sometimes do. I have a separate sketchbook just for him. That's very interesting. Hmm. Um, so I don't publish those things, uh, and some of them are observations in comic form. Some of them are just hmm. like little brief moments. But because I mean, I stopped doing it. But then you look at my old comics, and I go, God, I forgot that mm-hmm. he said this or he did yeah. that. I mean, as a parent, it just goes away. Hmm. You know. And um, and so I have a private thing that I do keep because I want do you I want think to remember. You ever publish it like if he gets old enough to be like yeah sure to ask him. No, I'll give it to him, oh. and that'll be his responsibility. He can burn it if he, <laughs> he wants to. He can find to. a publisher for it. Yeah. yeah, I mean I don't know about any of you, but like I hated when my parents are like remember the time yes, when you did absolutely. this. I'm just like stop stealing my narrative, you know. <laughs> That's a really you know, good point. My parents have never yeah. in their lives done that really they haven't told the story of like no. remember that time when he cut off his finger and you know he didn't do any of that it's not the way it's not the way my parents are okay mm. interesting oh they might be like remember the time you were real shitty or something yeah <laughs> yeah or your mother your brother and sister never did anything like this <laughs> yeah right no proud memories right but that's but they're they're I just recording. got an idea for a diary comic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, exactly. See again the immediacy of the, yeah, uh, the it has platform. To be yeah. Uh, you know, well, well, Kevin, I'm I'm curious because as as you showed us, you're rather open about your own experiences in exposing yourself mm-hmm. and your struggles at times. Mm-hmm. Um, have you had any occasion where in opening up so much? that you have perhaps inadvertently uh, shared some information about someone else that you didn't intend to, but it kind of backfired on you later? Uh, very much so. Um, I, um, I I was in a long-term relationship with a, another cartoonist, and um, we made a lot of work about each other and collaborated on a lot of things, and when the relationship ended, um, this is what, what we were getting back to in, in terms of, like, Figuring out what's safe to include and what what isn't, uh, and uh, forgetting to do a lot of self editing because so much of your process becomes about making the work to be immediate and making the work to put online and 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 share with people, um, and forgetting that the way that you depict others. Uh, has like a carries a weight and um, that like certain conversations are private and that like the details of why you broke up and and like the conversation that was the breakup like that's not something that anyone else has a right to except for you and the person that you're dating Um, and I just at the beginning of this year had to take a really hard uh, look and step back and I still feel uh, kind of terrible about some of the work that I made at that time because that person still really means a lot to me and uh, like I would love to get to a place where, where we're able to you know still both participate in the scene and still both make comics but like because of the way the relationship ended and because I sort of not that I like made any work that was attacking them but like just just like when you make comics daily and share them to the internet and when you make a diary comic you you are the protagonist and so when you're yeah when you're depicting your day and and your emotions you're automatically asking the reader to empathize with you and yeah. so anyone who is coming across you in a way that isn't pleasant or that 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 like yep. m- makes you feel bad and results in you making like th- three or four days worth of like wow I'm really fucking sad today like that person becomes the enemy to the reader and even it's if not like self deprecating yep. but I was making even myself if look silly they're like it doesn't matter yep. yeah. them yeah. exactly I look like an asshole even now. if you paint yourself as as the as the person at fault yep. just because I've done I've done that exact thing and yep. gotten roasted for it. I got I, I got roasted yeah. fucking hard and I deserved it one hundred percent and I I've like I took some time away I actually I don't publish my comics online anymore I um I publish them just on my Patreon they're still free like but you have to see, seek them out if you want to because I like 
social media and stuff, and, and we can. This is a different conversation we yeah. can talk about. But like, uh, posting daily has been a very important thing for me in terms of getting my work in front of people and making making connections in the comics community. Mm -hmm. uh, but just for where I am right now in my art, I need to not do that because it's changing the way that I make art and it, yeah. it's negatively impacting the person that I am. Yeah. Can I throw an idea at you real quick? And I know we're short on time probably. But mm -hmm. We have about five more minutes. Mm -hmm. Super fast. The um, And I remember Kate Beaton talking about this in terms of, of her, in terms of the internet being a weird um, uh, time capsule mm -hmm. like for instance right now and that breakup and the things when you say like no one has a right to that conversation which you're correct about mm -hmm. but then like two years from now that conversation doesn't have the same teeth that it has mm -hmm. right now it's mm -hmm. like when it's when it's so fresh there, there's so, and there's something about like if someone sees themselves or, or something still emotionally impactful now mm -hmm. um uh, or if you go back and it's like five years ago, someone sees it, it it's out of context. Mm -hmm. um, like taking that moment out of its natural timeline and viewing it out of context, it's even easier, A, for it to seem like you're you're uh, being rude or being mm -hmm. overexposing someone, but B, um, it gives it more power or drains it of power. Just mm -hmm. like, we're, like right now, those comics probably feel really raw. Mm -hmm. And in two years... Right. They're gonna feel like, oh, I remember that, and this is. But they'll maybe have more. They'll maybe be a little less uh, hurtful. Yeah, well, that, that's like that's the reason why. Like, I, making the work is still very important for me, and yeah. it's it's yeah. sort of necessary for like the healing process for a lot of things. And and so I think it's important to keep making that work, but still just taking a more like, uh, I guess. Ethical it, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. step about just like saving it for later, like if if, or you know I mean like, the the uh, the person that I was dating is also an autobiographical cartoonist, right. so like, it it just it just like is one of those things that like maybe this will be okay to make comics about in a year, but right now anything that I make is going to be colored by, like, the sadness mm -hmm. and sure. and that that can damage the overall story and um, yeah so I think it's I think it's also very important for me as as a developing like artist to make work and feel comfortable sitting on it mm -hmm. and not not automatically mm -hmm. dumping yeah. it onto the yeah. end yes. I've never done that I've literally never done that that's right that's yeah. the thing now, it, now guys we have to be mindful of the time because we don't want to impinge upon the next group that will be coming in here for their panel so um, I mean be, we could obviously carry this conversation well into another hour and then some but as we wrap up we have a couple of minutes now I wonder if each of you could briefly tell everyone where they can find your work and and, and maybe even express uh, a recent publication that they should particularly check out if you could please Glennis? let's start down there for oh, okay. That, was, uh, okay that may be a mistake starting with Dustin golly hold on <laughs> you can find Start these. with summer. Actually. You can find these donuts at Whole Foods. Dog, yeah, the Whole Foods are the sour cream donuts. Um, my website is dharbin, like DustinHarbin.com. I just posted a eight-page comic about my neighbor dying. It's very uplifting. <laughs> um, and there's links to all my other stuff. And I'm at uh, M4 downstairs next to Kayama, and right down from For Glenis. Two Summer. more hours. For two more hours. <laughs> um, you can find my work at uh, my website, summerpierre.com. I have a blog that I um, I will update my, every once in a while. Um, but I also have a, um, a comic, Paper Pencil Life, which you can find. I think I have like one or two copies. I'm almost sold out um, on, at, on the M section. Um, yeah. And I have a new book out called All the Sad Songs, which is a memoir and um, actually began as a diary entry. So, there you go. <laughs> uh, you can find uh, my work on, uh, well, my website is kevinbudnick.com. There's no C in Budnick. Um, and uh, I'm on Twitter, uh, 
you you can find me on the social medias. Uh, yeah, I have some. Uh, my table number is um, W12A, uh, and I have a new book out from Tinto Press that we're sold out of right now, but um, I think they'll have it online after the show. Uh, it's just a collection of my diary comics from 2017. My website is my name, and. I also have a new diary comic. I have not quit diary comics. I did this last year not about kids, which is also something I do. Uh, I have uh, This year I did a bunch of comics for The New Yorker, so you can find them there on my website. And uh, I have a new book coming that is uh, completely different, a, a biography of Charlotte Bronte. So... Yes, we'll be out next year. Hmm. I want to thank all the panelists for taking part in this panel. I also want to thank everyone in the audience. I wish we had more time for questions. Unfortunately, we didn't, but thank you very much for coming to listen.